Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to create an automation process to send reports, okay? So this will be very interesting. Um, if you have SaaS in your company and you're not using automation, you should because it's fantastic. There are so many things you can do with that. So in this example here, I have uh, an infinity table, so you can edit the data from here. You have many options, so people can just join and do the budgeting process. But the focus of this video is to send reports. Okay, so I have a dashboard. Some I have multiple pages here actually, and I will show you how to export this page and send it to some other like to some recipients. Okay, so what we can do is just to define here who I want to send that to. In this case, I'm going to do that to my email. I'm going to show you in the process, but this will be a very interesting video if it's your first time using SAS, okay? Our first step here is to go back to the hub and add a new automation process. So you'll see here, new automation. There are multiple templates you can use, but I'm gonna start with a blank automation. Just give it a name. Save. And now we can start dragging some blocks from here. Let's start with a very simple block, which is the create report. So here in click reporting, you will find the create report block. Just bring it here. Here in app ID, you will find the list of apps that you have in your tenant. Okay, so I'll just click here and do a lookup. Well, I have multiple apps here. I can also find them with the ID. So just check in here, the ID of this app is 5A6C and so on. So let me just type here sales budgeting and there it is. I will select this app. This is the report name and we can define if the sheets mode will be custom or all. If you select all, it will export all pages from your dashboard. If you select custom, you need to define with another block, which is the add sheet to report. Let's do that. So I'm going to bring here the add sheet to report and I want to select only this sheet. Going back here, now I will do a lookup again and it will list all the sheets that I have in the app. The name of this sheet is report overview. So let's go back. There it is. Now we need to bring another block, which is the generate report. So I'll just click here, bring it. We can select if we want to export that in PDF or PowerPoint. And now we need to define where we're gonna send that or where we're gonna store it. There are many connectors here on the left. So if you want to upload that in a SharePoint or a Google Drive, there are many options. In our case, I'm just gonna send that to my email, okay? So I'll just click here in mail. I'll bring this send mail block. I already have my account connected here and I will define the two. In this case, I will just put my email. You can also add someone to be in CC, BCC subject, demo report, video. The type, it can be a text, HTML, Markdown, in our case, I'll just select HTML and the body. And here we'll add the attachment. Click here and click here again. So the only option we have here in this line, in this thread, is the report from the generate report block. So let's click here. And now let's click here to run it. You can follow the steps block by block here in chronologically. And I can see that all the blocks were executed. It was sent to my email. Now let me show you the message. There we go. Here we have the PDF with that same page with all the values and everything else. But you saw that I had to trigger that manually. And what if we want to trigger that with an URL or any other kind of process? We can go back. Let's go back here. Uh, in their start block, we have the option on how to run that. So we can start, we can run with a manual, uh, schedule task, triggered or webhook, okay? If we use trigger, you have this kind of URL. And this means that if I just copy this and paste it in here, 
and press enter. So it's now, it. Uh, the process was queued. If I go back here to the history page, I can see it's running. So every time I enter that URL in my browser or basically anywhere, it will run the process again. And again, I will receive another email. So this is super interesting. We can do many things with that. Now I want to customize the recipient. So instead of just typing my email address here on the top, I want to leave that as a variable. We can use the input block, which is here in basic. Just drag it in here. Now I have another option. If you go back to the start point, you will see, oh, not yet. Actually, I need to add an input here. So the label will be email, okay? And going back, now I can see that at the end, I have here and email equals to something, okay? So this will always ask for some something here after the email, okay? This will create basically a variable and we can use that here in the rest, in the, in the rest of the process. So let's just go back here. I will just delete this part. Here I have the input block, which is on the top. So it's referring to this block. So I'll click here in inputs and click here in email. Okay, even though I don't have anything right now, later it will be populated. So let's just click here, save. And if I try to run it, it will ask for my email in this process. So as you can see, I need to type my email so that the process can really run. Let's do that. So I'll just put my email here. Now it will run again without any problems, but ideally we want to change that email, right? So let's go back here. With the start block, you will see that we can copy this URL. And let me just put that in a notepad. So anything I type here will be the recipient of this email, of this PDF. So we can use this URL in the app. So let's say that I want to create here a button. I will just customize the app. This could be a button, could be an infinity button as I did here in our example. So this is basically the same thing I'm using in this case. Okay, so I have a variable and I'm changing the variable here. And this part of the variable is the last part of the URL. Okay, so just let me just go back to the report page. Click here, I will add a button. It could be this button, okay. And a custom object. Actually, first I need to create a variable. So I will just create here V email test, create bring the variable input, change it here so that you can also change the value of that variable. Here in button, we'll go to navigation and open a website or email. Okay, so click here. And in this part, you can define the URL. So I'm just gonna paste it in here, but we need to pass that as a string. So just add that single comma and here we're going to use the variable so we have v email test okay apply and now we can change here the recipient so if i type again my email here let's just go back to see the result so you'll see that at the end i have here my email so if i click on that button I'll click it, it open a new tab, it will queue the task. And if I look at the history, it's already running. So it's gonna send to my email because it's it was the variable that was set. There's one important point I almost forgot to mention. Uh, normally the accounts have by default 100 reports per month. So you can run this, actually you can run this block, which is the generate report 100 times per month, okay? So in this example, I already consumed like four. So this will be subtracted from my 100 limit. Okay, actually for the TNET in general. So keep that in mind.
Well, that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to share this with you because I think it might be useful. It was for me at least. Well, if you liked the video, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel and share if you think this can be useful for other people as well. Okay, check out the other videos that I have here in the channel because I have some quick tips and tricks. Pretty cool. And that's it. So I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.